Can you hypnotize me? Ah, uh, you are. Yeah. Okay. Good hypnotize right Thanks, I mean, now. Do a hypnotize right now. Huh? Do a hypnotize right now. 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 Do a hypnotize right
and gentlemen, boys and girls, and accompany shepherd. Please make your way to the dance floor, where we shall be celebrating. Are you ready? Oh, 
Thank you. 
your trust and shortly I will be letting you win a patient, ready? You did a great job in school 141 days ago and we are still proud of you. Marshall told me on your special night. Sorry Nathan, but tonight is Kobe our favourite cousin. We love you and we can't wait to spend many more special times together. I would say thank you, but that was a bit mean. So, um, thank you. Now, as many of you will know, Kobe is a shy boy, nervous around just about everyone. In fact, I've been told many times tonight that people are worried that he's sitting in the corner and not enjoying his party. So, uh, don't up. Just kidding. Kobe is an incredibly bubbly boy, and from what he tells me, the whole of Cranbrook already knows him after a year of being at the school. So, here to tell us about popularity are his friends, Aiden, Aiden, and Ben. Let's make a poll. To the kids, to the kids, put your hands up if you're actually Kobe's friends. None? None. But inside, we really do love Kobe. He's a good friend. We've had so many good moments with Kobe, and they haven't stopped since he moved school. We all know about Kobe's passion for girls. And we ain't talking about Kara. <laughs> His love of girls started off with Maya up here. Then in year five came along Maya. Times four. There was also Shoshi, Karen, Charlie. Then there was the girl who should not be named Kobe. You know who it is. <laughs> Then he was too cool for a manual, so he went on to Mar Mariah, the Mariah girls, of course. Then there was Lex and Lula, and the rest of the gang. Times everybody by two, and that's a lot of girls. On a serious note, Kobe used to be a modest, down-to-earth, serious young boy. Now he's a grown-up. He's not so modest, he's outgoing, but he's still a great kid. Muscle Tom Cody, you're my best mate, and I've known you for a long, long time. I never regret making friends with you. A big thanks to our parents for introducing us. Thank you. We've been through a lot together and I've watched you grow up. Sadly, I don't think I've grown in height, so I haven't seen you. I, you haven't really seen me grow, but I've, I've, I've grown mentally as well from how wise and smart you are. but I know we will still stay great friends and you did so well in school the other day. <laughs> so I'm going to love seeing you live your life committed to the horror and I'm glad that you will be going to school with us every morning, weekday and every night. Muscle talk Kobe and have a great night.
Thanks boys, you made it pretty clear that Kobe isn't a shy boy at all. Now, I'm sure many people would envy Dad's position. Retired, most amazing firstborn child you could imagine. Best wife in the world. There isn't much more he could ask for, really. Speaking of his wife, Mum is the best. I couldn't imagine having a better mum. It takes a pretty special person to cancel a whole bum into a party. You do do everything for us and we couldn't appreciate you. We couldn't appreciate everything you do more. Your husband is alright. He gives us so much and does so much for us. Dad, it could be time for you to go to work soon. But for the meantime, we will enjoy the time we have with you because you're the best dad we could imagine. Come up on stage. I brought my cabins, family, friends, and of course, Kobe. So, obviously, my original speech was going to be starting by saying, Kobe, you were amazing and sure yesterday, but instead, let me welcome you all to what the Guinness Book of World Records have officially sanctioned as the longest bar mitzvah weekend in the, in the history of the Jewish world. So, we, it's probably worth recapping it. We all know the story, though. Kobe was sick during the week with gastro leading up to the bar mitzvah. He gets better on Friday. Kara starts feeling sick, thinks she's getting gastro, struggles through but sees Kobe perform like a superstar at shore, passes out at the end of the service, turns a shade of green that's even greener than Princess Fiona, hosts 50 people for lunch, ignores the pain but finally succumbs to it, off to emergency at midnight, we tell the doc that we have a situation, can you put off treatment until 10pm tonight? He looks at us like idiots, Kara has emergency appendix operation on Sunday morning, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, is what they say. Months we plan the party and all up in an hour. Wow, what a weekend. The one good thing that did come from the weekend was that we were really pleased that all of the food from the party didn't go to waste and was donated to Oz Harvest and some local hospitals, which was a wonderful outcome. So. Sorry, I just need to talk. Um, Cara and I must give a very special thank you to my sister Nikki and to our very good friend Julie Clint uh, and Pam and Kelly, our party planners, for all your help on that crazy Sunday and making calls to let everyone know that the party was cancelled. Uh, a particular thank you to Danae and the team here at the establishment uh, for your generosity and support back in December. We're really thrilled to be able to finally have our party here at the establishment, so thank you very much. Uh, Um, also, just one, one more special thanks to the surgeon, who was a, 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 as a memento of the weekend, was kind enough to follow the moment in perpetuity. And then oh. sure I mean, who would have thought such a useless piece of human appendage would cause a weekend of such incredible chaos? <laughs> The, the real story of all this is that Kara is she's truly a superwoman. What she endured to allow Kobe to shine in Shul back in December is beyond belief. It's a sign of her incredible resilience, her strength of character, and it's why I've loved her so much for 24 years. I mean, our kids are who they are today primarily because of your unconditional love and nurturing. I am who I am today because you're always there for me. None more so than the crucial support you provided when I decided to stop work. Thank you for being you. I love you and can't wait for a throw off. Right. How good does our MC look tonight? That is serious swag. Where is he? He's not happy about that. You've done a great job as MC, but more importantly, Nathan, you've done an even better job at being an incredible son, brother, grandson, and friend of all of us here. So, Tom and I love the fact that you and Kobe are such great mates and that you're a wonderful role model for Kobe, most of the time. We love you, we're proud of you, and we're also really nervous that you start driving in five weeks. <laughs> It's fantastic to have so many of our family and friends here tonight to celebrate with us. Um, tonight's actually not just a bar mitzvah party, it's also a birthday party for Jeremy, Sarah, Heidi and Greg who are celebrating their birthdays today and tomorrow. So many happy returns. And of course you can check out 
chat about the first clue that you're looking later. <laughs> Been an expensive party. Um, so many of you over the last few weeks have asked if we're excited about the party, and to be honest, it's been a little strange having the party so long after the real part of the news for in December. But it's been the easiest party to plan, as everything tonight is pretty much as we'd arranged last year. Even the fully thawed Hanukkah donuts for December are back on the menu later on tonight. As we've gotten closer to the day, we've been reflecting on the shul service last December and realise how excited we really are about, uh, are about tonight. I've also been reflecting on my decision to leave work to spend more time with my incredible family. At Nathan's permits, but believe it or not, I started my speech by saying how wonderful it was that I was able to actually be there and not on the other side of the world. How things have changed. I've loved all my time that I've spent with Cara and the boys, but to be honest, my retirement didn't exactly get off on the right foot. I'd only finished for a couple of weeks, and the boys were on school holidays, and I thought I was hanging out, having a great time, and really good quality time actually. Cody turned around to me and said, Dad, I think we're spending way too much time together. <laughs> Slightly troubling, not exactly the response I was looking for, but I've got to say, having the opportunity to be around the boys as they grow up ever so quickly is something I'll never regret. The last few months um, in between uh, uh, Shul and now has given us an opportunity to reflect on our favourite second child. <laughs> what can I tell you about Cody that you don't already know? We all know that he loves music, rock concert, he loves to dance, he loves sport, and all things red and white, purple and yellow, to tough at the moment. He's compassionate, sensitive, respectful, Mr. Habit Chat, always brings a smile to your face, and according to Facebook and his friends, somewhat of a Casanova. But here may be a couple of tidbits you didn't know about him. He doesn't have a very strong stomach. It's not unusual for him to halfway through a meal, just excuse himself, head off to the bathroom, have a good vomit, come back and then have his dessert. <laughs> He's actually one of, of only a handful of five-year-olds who can say that they've passed through Singapore customs in just his underwear, <laughs> having thrown up all over himself on a boat trip back from the Pipe in town. <laughs> You may know that Kobe's been playing Aussie Rules since he was five. What you may not know is that the talent scouts have been watching him since he was about seven. Barry Hall, the great ex footy player, happened to turn up to watch one of Kobe's games on a Saturday morning down at Trumper Park. Kobe took an absolute screamer of a mark in front of him, and Barry was heard to say, You see that little Aboriginal kid over there? You're going to keep an eye on him. <laughs> Tenacious, fearless, and never one to back down, but I, we do know that already. Unfortunately, as uh, uh, Ryan mentioned, this has its downsides, as he's become a regular at various emergency ward rooms around the county and the state. The list today includes three concussions, stitches in his chin, dislocated shoulder, half a chopped off finger, plus various visits, x-rays, or suspected fractures and breaks. That's the downside. The positive of all this is that in my spare time I've worked out a business plan to introduce frequent visitors cards to the hospital system. With benefits such as emergency lounge access, early bed selection, and colour x-rays. <laughs> Kobe, you were a superstar in Shul last year, the way you read from the Torah, your Haf Torah and your Dabar Torah, and memories that we're so proud to have forever. It's been a few months now, so many of you may not remember, but in his Dabar Torah, Kobe referred to his participation in the Twinnings program at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. This is where the name of the child who perished in the Holocaust was given to Kobe, as well as the page of testament about that child and the history of that child. When we were in Israel in January, we visited Yad Vashem and as part of the twinning program we had an incredible tour around Yad Vashem. And it was made even more special because we were able to do it with uh, Ben and Josh Fischel. That uh, was a, a, a day that we'll never forget. As it turns out, Kobe's twin shared his birthday and he was killed in the gas chambers just before his 13th birthday. So he never had his own bar mitzvah. Kobe, we were so proud of you when you dedicated your bar mitzvah to the memory of Herzl Lacks. It was at that moment we realised that you'd truly become a Jewish man and had taken on board all of the values we've tried to instill in you during your short life. Kobe, I want to finish by sharing with you the words that I read to Nathan at his bar mitzvah 
which Rabbi Hammond's coincidentally used during the High Holy Days last year, and it's entitled A Philosophy of Life. Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your actions. Keep your actions positive because your actions become your values. And keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. Craig, remember to live your life with no regrets. Always focus on what's ahead. We're so proud of you. And we're so blessed to be able to say you're our son. Muzzle top, and we love you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks again for all helping Cara, Nathan, and, and myself celebrate Kobe's Bar Mitzvah, finally. Um, and we did put a short video together to uh, highlight Kobe's first 13 years of life. So uh, have a look at the TV screens and uh, enjoy. under the tutelage of Rabbi Hammonds. It begins by meeting with the rabbi, commencing lessons, put in the hard hours, followed by more meetings with the rabbi, Hammonds. Before you know the day arrives, you're standing up at the bimmer, ready to do your thing. Thank you, Rabbi Hammonds, for everything you have done to make my bar mitzvah such a memorable occasion. During my bar mitzvah experience, I have been very lucky as I have had a lot of help from one other person, Emily Nathan. She blew it up with me even when I hadn't practiced and was so patient regardless. Without Em, none of this could have happened. Thank you so much. Yay. Aiden, Ben and Aiden. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the speech. It was alright. <laughs> you guys are the best. You funny idiots who make me laugh. Even though we don't go to the same school anymore, I'm really happy we're still very close and I know we'll always be close and good friends. <laughs> Amy and Ryan, thank you for that awesome speech. You are my two favourite first cousins in the whole world. <laughs> Your speech was much better than one, the one that you did at Nathan's, because you obviously love me much more than Nathan. <laughs> to all those out-of-towners, even though some of you couldn't come for the second, even some of you couldn't come for the first time, it was awesome having you all in Sydney, all at the one time. To all of you who have come for the second time, thank you so much for making the trip from Melbourne. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your life to come to Sydney for me. Dear grandparents, Uba, Noni, Uba, Papa and Joe, you are so awesome. You are always there for me, always willing to drop whatever you are doing to spend time with me. I love spending time with you at all of our Friday night dinners or just hanging out. On my birthdays, you are always the first to call me, and if I'm sick, you always somehow find out and call to see how I am, or show up on my doorstep with treats. You are all very special, I love you so much. Nathan, 
I was I know I was reluctant to let to have you MC, but surprisingly, you didn't do a bad job. <laughs> this time I hope you write into your speech. But honestly, you're an awesome brother who cares for me as so, as I know you don't clutch me as much as other brothers. You look out for me, we share so much in common, and deep, deep, deep down, you love me, and I think I love you. My mum. This second party is much better than the first one. <laughs> Even though this party is five and a bit months after my actual brother's one, it still feels the same. Mum, you organise this whole party with a little help. The work you do for me every day is incredible. You always have time for Nathan and I, whether it's just having a chat or organising us, cooking and baking our favourite foods, driving us wherever we need to go, and always happy to have our friends over for whatever we ask. You will happily help me with my work, that is due the next day, and you don't get angry at me because you love me. You are the best mum in the world. You are funny, caring, loving, and just the best. Dad. Dad, dad, dad. What can I say? You're amazing. You work so hard for our family so we can have a, a, an amazingly privileged life and travel to and experience in fantastic places, organising all our holidays with great precision. You always take Nathan and I to sporting events. Uh, they're to watch us play sport and encourage and support us in all that we do. We especially share a love of basketball and the LA Lakers. I thought when you retired it might be a nightmare having you around all the time. But it has been so awesome and I love being with being able to spend more time with you. You are so caring, amazing, and I love you. I could not ask for a better day. Thank you all for coming who came tonight and I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Thank you for that and thank you to everyone for the speech tonight. It could have been a bit nicer, but thank you. Um, there's plenty more food to drink that will be served, so please make sure you eat, drink, and also sign the uh, book down the end uh, and have a good night.